We start by creating a corridor in the same way that we would normally. We can give it a name. But instead of choosing an alignment and a profile, we can now choose a feature line. We add assemblies in the same way. It comes up baselines and regions in the same way it did before. We can also edit the corridor in exactly the same way we have done when we're using alignments and profiles. We can also add feature lines as extra baselines. So we can choose different feature lines as a baseline uh, once we've created the corridor and not just during the creation process. Using that, we can just add regions to it as again, same as we could when we were having alignments and profiles before we did this. This can be a very useful tool for creating existing uh, corridor. If you want to create an existing corridor model or anything like that, we can use this tool to create uh, the existing much easier straight from feature uh, straight from feature lines from a survey or 3D polylines converted into feature lines in a survey. We can just target everything exactly the same. We can also edit the frequencies in the same way we did before for our accuracy. as we go through. Once we've got that, it still displays in the same way. Um, and everything else is exactly the same as what it was before. If you go through, you can change all your code set styles and you can change everything you like to display it however you want. We can now add subfolders within surfaces and our new point corridors, which I'll take you through later subfolders within our data shortcuts folders to uh, organize our surfaces better if we want to. So here you can see I'm making an, an existing and a proposed subfolder. I'll then create data shortcuts like normal. Choose all my surfaces. From there I can just drag and drop them into whatever folder I like which makes it much more manageable when I get to importing them into different drawings and different models. From there, you can also now data shortcut corridor models. As you can see here, I'm just exporting my corridor model called Meadow Road. On this next drawing, I've opened a blank drawing. I can then just import my corridor model into a blank drawing. You can see it's slightly different to how it looked before, to how it looks on other surfaces, etc. Come through, it rebuilds the model. In here, it's come through, it's created a few labels and things which I'm just going to get rid of. Once you're there, it performs in a similar way without the editing capabilities, just like you would get in a surface. You can change your code set styles, so you can just change the way things are displayed. This can be very good for things like setting out information when you need, when you need to use uh, sample lines and you don't want your sample lines to run through your original corridor. In here, I have a data shortcut corridor, which is also new to 2017. I can extract my corridor solids and I can pick all regions slightly differently than the way I did before. I go through and you can see all the different properties which you can take through. Second tab down here is all user data. So I could add my own information if I wanted to. The last one is all about building the model, all the types of the model. You've then got the way you want it to extract as solids or bodies and um, corridor sampling. And you can create a dynamic link to the corridor now as well. If you create the corridor solid, you can then select different elements within it and it will create each layer based on that. Within your properties, you can also now see underneath extended data, that's where all the information is saved within the properties within the corridor solid. When in Navis works, you can append a solids model just like you can with most other things. And in here, when it comes up, you can select your elements and they just display in your properties panel, just like they would in AutoCAD or something else, anything else. They come over in actually two tabs, though, as when you go into your properties from your corridor solids, you can see the two different bits of information as you go through. And you can also pick different solids. The first is extracting uh, feature lines within 
Civil 3D. When you extract feature lines from a corridor, you can now see as a little preview which ones you're going to extract when you do it. And it will also pick multiple as you go through. I've just gone from the back foot path and crown at the moment. It then will list all the feature lines below that, so all the layers as part of your corridor build-up will get listed as part of that. And you can go through and pick all the ones you want, and pick or untick all the ones you don't. You can also untick multiple at the top left and just pick a couple if that's all you needed. Once there, you can click Extract on the bottom right, and that will extract them separately. If you go into the properties, you can see they automatically have a dynamic link which can be unticked if you wanted it to. You can also now move feature lines to a non-site. This means they won't have a site, uh, whereas previously they'd always had to. Therefore, they now will be displayed in your tool space. This is also in 2016 if you get the update service pack. Thanks for watching my video.